Hello there. We're looking at circle theorems and we have an exam type question that we want to solve. So, QTO is giving us 22, QPV is giving us 72 degrees. What is angle QOT? So, angle QOT is this angle right here that we're trying to determine. What is that angle? Now, QOT is an angle that is a part of a triangle. Triangle QOT, as we're seeing, we have 22 degrees that's given. We want to find this one. But do we know the third angle here? If we know this angle, then we can find this one because we have we would have two angles known in order to find this one. And if you look at this angle here, we can actually recognize that this angle here is what? 90 degrees. Now you can't just look at it and assume it's 90 degrees. But by theorem, a tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees. So this angle here, 90 degrees angle. So we can say, considering triangle Q, T, O, doesn't matter what the order of the letters, as long as we mention it's triangle with the three vertices Q, O, and T, or Q, T, and O, we have what? Angle Q, T, O, which is equal to 22 degrees. We have angle O, Q, T, which is equal to 90 degrees. What's the reason for that? Radius meets tangent at 90. So this radius meets a tangent at 90 degrees. By finding this angle, we now just have this angle to find which in which we were at. So angle QOT is equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of the two other angles, which is 22 degrees plus 90 degrees. And so that's 180 degrees minus 112 degrees, right? So remember again that we have three angles in a triangle. If we know two, we can add them up and subtract from one to get the remaining angle. And so this angle here will be 180 degrees minus 112 degrees. That will be 68 degrees. This is 68 degrees. And what's the reason? Sum of angles in a triangle because we found angle QOT, which is the same as angle QOR because along the same line, just that we want to recognize that this angle here is the center angle in QOT or QOR. So now we know this angle, and if you pay attention to it, you recognize it's the angle at the center. Okay, so clearly we remember the theorem that if we have an angle at the center, Standing on this, these two points here, in this case, let's call it Q and R, just like this one, Q point Q and point R. And from that, those two points, we have the angle formed at the center, we have the angle formed at the center. The angle here is 68 degrees. And so if we have another angle formed from those same two points, but at the circumference, this angle is half of the angle at the center, half of 68 degrees, which is 34 degrees. Because the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. This arc being QR, or we can see chord QR. Either one is fine, but they're standing on the same endpoints Q and R. So angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So this angle will be half of 68, which is 34 degrees. So QPR is equal to half of the angle at the center, which is QOR, which is half of 68 degrees, which is 34 degrees. And what's the reason? Angle at center is twice angle at the circumference. All right, that's the theorem. Let's go again, angle TQR. So we're going to go from T to Q and R. So we're looking at this angle. What angle is this? Now, to help us find this, determine this angle, we will now look at a theorem where we have, let's try to replicate that somewhat. So here we have a tangent, and here we have a chord. And what we do have is an angle between this tangent and this chord. Now the angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle formed by that chord, not in this segment, but in the alternate segment, this unshaded region is the major segment and this shaded region is the minor segment. That's what a chord does, divides a circle into a minor and major segment. So this angle between the tangent and this chord here, this line along, going along here that cuts the circle is a chord. This angle between the tangent and this chord is formed in the minor segment. So this is the minor segment. But the unshaded region here is what? the major segment. So the angle between the tangent and the chord is in the minor segment. So any angle formed in the major segment 
on the circumference and it's standing on this cord here the same cord that divides the circle from both ends of the cord let's say the angle between there is um, x degrees then the one formed at the circumference is also x degrees and we refer to this as the alternate segment theorem angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle in alternate segment for those of you that need to see a second example let's look at this let's assume that we have a second example here let's put a tangent here let's put a chord here and let's say we have an angle between are formed by the tangent and this chord here let's call that angle 70 degrees then any angle formed by the same chord but not forming this segment here but in the major segment at the circumference that's important it must be at the circumference it must be standing on the end points of the chord this is a chord and this angle here is standing at the end points of the chord this angle here is also 70 degrees and what theorem is this the alternate segment theorem and it's a theorem that states that the angle between a tangent and a chord this angle here is equal to the angle in the alternate segment it's equal to it so we can say this angle here if you notice this angle here is between the tangent sqt and the chord qr this angle right here and it's equal to the angle that is standing on the end points of the chord in the alternate segment in the alternate segment so this angle is 34 degrees so this one between here, between tangent and chord, must also be equal to 34 degrees. So angle TQR, going from T, Q to R, is equal to angle QPR, which is equal to 34 degrees. What's the reason? Alternate segment theorem. Okay, so let's look at now angle OQR, going from O to Q to R. So we're looking at this angle here. How would you find this angle there? Now, you must be realized that this angle here, OQR, is part of this triangle, this triangle OQR itself. But angle OQR, which is this angle here, is only a small part, only one angle of three. So we have one angle here, another one here, and another one here. Well, we can find this angle OQR several ways. Remember, it is angle OQT that's equal to 90 degrees, like this one. That's equal to 90 degrees. But we don't want we do not want all of this, we only want part of it, which is this part here. Which we can actually extend it down here and say this is the one we're talking about. It's the same angle. What angle is that? Alright, so we know this entire angle here is 90. We know this part is 34. So what's the remaining portion? Going from here, this line, the radius, going right up to the tangent. The radius meets tangent at 90 degrees. So this angle, entire angle here is 90. From this radius to the tangent is 90. Doesn't matter if we start here from the radius to the tangent 90, or we start out here, or we go here like this. It's still the same 90 degrees. However, we we know part of it is 34. So what's the remaining part? Well, obviously, it would be the difference between 34 and 90 degrees. So we can actually say that angle OQR will be equal to 90 degrees minus 34 degrees. So that's 56 degrees. I will simply write complementary angles because they add up to what? 90 degrees. Okay, that's the reason why we take 34 from 90 to find the remaining amount. But there's another way to find it, and that's the way I want to show you as well. All right, so we know this entire angle here is 90 degrees. All right, we know this portion here is 34. But we're going to ignore that 34 for now. We're trying to find what angle this is. So we're going to consider triangle QOR. And triangle QOR has this radius and this radius. And all the radii in a circle have the same length. So it means that the triangle we're talking about here, let's do a sketch of it. Triangle O, Q, R. This length and this length are the same, which means that the base angles here and here, which face those two sides that are equal in length, must also be equal 
right? So we said the base angles of a tri ICC triangle are equal. And so we can see, considering triangle OQR, or QOR, angle OQR is equal to, so the sum of the angles would be 180 for sure. We'll take 68 out of that, which will give us the remaining sum of these angles, Q and R. We're going to divide by two equal parts. And that will give us what? Um, 112 divided by 2, which is equal to 56 degrees. And so we can say OQR is equal to 56 degrees, which is 56 degrees. And we can say base angles of an isosceles triangle. Okay. Well, let's enter these values. This is 56 degrees. This angle is 56 degrees as well. So it's easy for us to now find this angle here, which is QRT. Well, if we know this angle here is 56, if we notice that we have what? What do we have here? We have a straight line here, right? And this angle here of 56, and along with this angle, will form 180 degrees. The two angles are next to each other on a straight line. They share a common line or a point. And so they are next to each other on a straight line. And so we say it will be QRT will be equal to 180 degrees minus angle ORQ, which is equal to 180 degrees minus 56 degrees, which is equal to what? 6 from 10 was 4, and 6 from 8 is 2, that's 124 degrees. And we can simply say ad adjacent angles on a straight line. Obviously, there's another way we can actually find this angle as well of 124 degrees. We can actually find this angle. Well, we could have said what? Since we know this angle here is 34 and this one is 22, notice that this angle, QRT, is part of what? A triangle. This triangle outside here. All right, so this triangle, um, QRT, so we could say consider, considering triangle QRT, angle QRT, right? When we're talking about triangle QRT, we're talking about this three-sided shape. When I say angle QRT, I'm talking about going from Q, to R as a line, and then turn at R to T. So we're talking about just this angle here. This this symbol means angle, just as if, if I put the hat over the R. So either one is fine. Let's work with the one that they gave us. But angle QRT is this one. And we can find it by simply saying 180 degrees minus the sum of the other two angles in the triangle, which is 34 degrees plus 22 degrees. So it's 180 degrees minus... 180 degrees minus 56 um, degrees, and that will be equal to 124 degrees. All right, and the reason for that would be sum of angles in a triangle. And I have triangle, I have 34 degrees, 22 degrees, and the remaining angle must be 124 degrees. We're asked to find angle TQP. So we're going to go from T to Q to P. Now this angle here, T. QP, which is right, this angle here, is what we're trying to find. T, Q, and we're going to go down to P. Angle T, Q, P. However, there's a different way of finding it. If you realize that we have this line and this line being parallel lines. And so these, these two lines are parallel, and we're given the angle down here between this line and the transversal. So if you notice, connecting the two parallel lines, we have a transversal QP or PQ, right? So this angle here is 72 degrees. How do we find this angle here? Well, these are co-interior angles because they are angles within the two parallel lines and they are found on the same side of the transversal. So it's same side interior angles or we can say co-interior angles which is even better. So angle TQP will be equal to what? 180 degrees minus whatever this angle is. And this angle down here is 72 degrees. Okay, and that's so that will give us our angle. Two for, and this could be 108 degrees. It's equal to 180 degrees minus angle QPV is equal to 180 degrees minus the value of angle QPV, which is 72 degrees, which give us um, 108 degrees. And what's the reason again? Co-interior angles.
All right, awesome. Now let's find angle SQP. Angle SQP means we're going to go from S to Q to P. So we're looking for this angle here, All right? We're going from S to Q and down to P. So connecting these two lines, we have the angle here. And if you look at what we have so far, we know that this entire angle here, going all the way from, the, from this transversal right up to the tangent, we have 108 degrees. And so what's the remaining amount that will make this a semicircle? If going right around will be at 360 degrees. Angle at a point, right? A circle. Full turn. 360 degrees. But since we have a semicircle, half of that, you know, this is these two angles are two angles on a straight line. In other words, adjacent angles on a straight line are angles next to each other sharing a common point on a straight line at up to 180 degrees. So angle SQP can be found by saying 180 degrees minus angle TQP, which is equal to what? 180 degrees minus 108 degrees, which give us 72 degrees. So this angle here is 72 degrees. What's the reason? Adjacent angles on a straight line. But there's another way we could have found that. Let's just look at it quickly. So we have two parallel lines, and we have what? A transversal here, right? This is S, this is Q, this is T, this is P, and this is V. But notice down here is what? 72 degrees? This angle here is forming a Z, correct? And this line is parallel to this. So once we have two parallel lines, what will be this angle here? I mean, they're internal angles, yes. This angle is an internal angle, just like this one and this one. And even if we extend this, this is also an internal angle here as well. Right, but notice that these two angles are opposite on the transversal. And so we say that they are alternate angles, and to alternate interior angles, in fact. So angle SQP, going from S to Q to P, is equal to angle QPV, is equal to 72 degrees. What, what, what angles they are? They are alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles are equal. So we have angles that are on the same side again, remember? That this angle here and this one here are co-interior, they add up to 180, but these two are alternate interior angles and they're equal. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this lesson and it was clear enough for you.